unexpected wintry blanket drop down on the Notre Dame campus the last couple of days providing Irish fans with a snowy backdrop to the second to last home game of the season here in South Bend as Northwestern the old time rivals from just down the road outside Chicago visit the now 18th ranked fighting Irish of Notre Dame crews work into last night and into this morning to clear the stadium seats of a mid November record snow which dumped about a foot of lake effect snow in the area and a lot has happened in the past 35 days since the Irish played here the losses to Florida State and Arizona State and for the first time in a month here come the Irish. Last time Northwestern and Notre Dame met 19 years ago, the Wildcats pulled off one of the biggest upsets in their history, beating the Irish here 17 to 15. They were 28 point underdogs and looking for a little more magic today as they come in on a four game losing streak. With a record of three and six. Pat Fitzgerald was an All-American linebacker on that team. Now in his ninth season as the head coach at Northwestern, already at the age of just 39, the winningest coach in the school's history. As we send you down to the field and Catherine Tappen. Coach, you told us this week Everett Golson surprised you with his bounce back leadership and his energy at practice. What can we expect from him in this game today? I expect him to play well. You know, we're going to let him go, be aggressive early, and uh, you know, let him run our offense. You know, I think it's important that, you know, he gets off to a good start and, and, and let him be who he is. I, I know he's got to take care of the football. He knows that, but I think it's important that we're aggressive and let him be the player that he is. How does your young defense get its confidence back after last week's loss at ASU? Well, you know, we had a lot to do with it on offense. So I think it's important that they do a good job communicating today, tackling well. And, you know, again, I think it's important for us that defensively we continue to grow each week because they're young and we know there's going to be some rough spots. But as long as they continue to grow, we'll be fine. What is the biggest challenge you see in Northwestern? Well, you know, they don't give up big plays and they play very smart on offense. I think it's important that we take care of the ball. Coach, thank you very much. You. Guys, while the Irish lost senior linebacker Joe Schmidt to an injury two games ago at Navy, they are expected to get Austin Collinsworth and Cody Riggs back in the lineup today, two veteran leaders who will certainly provide leadership to this young defense today. Dan? All right, thank you very much, Catherine, as we welcome you to the booth, and we welcome in the 1984 Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie. We'll be checking in with Mike Mayock on the field in just a bit, but can you believe you're about ready to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Hail Mary? Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> All right. Where is the time gone? It, it, it's flown by. Speaking of the Heisman, it wasn't too long ago when Notre Dame quarterback Everett Golson was in the conversation for a possible Heisman Trophy, and his team was definitely in the conversation to be a playoff contender for the championship. But how things have changed, Doug, and the demise has been mostly due to turnovers for both. No doubt about it. Five turnovers a week ago, four of them interceptions. I wasn't as upset about the interceptions, tip balls, and things of that nature. It's the fumbles that bother me. He doesn't protect the ball. That's where he can improve. But Brian Kelly did say he's too darn good a player to put handcuffs on. And he reiterated that with Catherine. He's turning them loose. You have to be aggressive to make big plays. Well, Northwestern's coach Pat Fitzgerald has turned the program around a couple of times. Once as a player in the mid 90s, we talked about the big upset here and then as a coach. But Northwestern has been struggling for mainly the last year and really they've lost four in a row coming in here. So what do they have to do to try to pull off another upset? Well, they've been playing solid defense. So offensively, they've got to pick it up a little bit. And the only way to do that, they don't have a stout offensive line. They can't pass, protect, drop back. They've got to move the pocket and get rid of the ball quickly. They're not making big plays, only three plays of over 30 yards this year. So they've got to be very efficient, no negative plays. Jack Mitchell, who's a standout on the baseball team for Northwestern, handles the kickoffs and the field goal duties as Amir Carlisle is back deep for Notre Dame. 48th meeting between Northwestern and Notre Dame. First in 19 years as Mitchell sends it Carlisle's way. Backpedals midway into the end zone, and he'll take a knee, and Notre Dame will come out with its first series with Everett Golson again at the controls 
Coach Kelly telling us Doug that he was really impressed with his attitude. He said he owned it. It caught me by surprise after what Kelly termed the debacle in the desert last week. He showed a lot of leadership all week long right after the game in the press conference early this week in a press conference. He's ready to go. He was upbeat when he was talking to us. So Tarian Folston flanks Golson. Remember Folston didn't have a carry in the second half against Arizona State last week. More on that in a moment. And Golson's first pass incomplete intended for Will Fuller. It'll be second down and 10. And that was a big discussion point during the game last week against Arizona State. It was the pass protection or lack thereof that Folston provided the leading rusher for Notre Dame this year. Right, and they really picked it up in the second half when Cam McDaniel got in there for pass protection reasons. They fake it to Folston, and Golson rolls right. That one's incomplete, intended for C.J. Procise, third in 10. Nick Van Hoos, the corner for Northwestern, on the coverage. Yeah, that's two plays in a row where the ball sailed a little bit on Everett. He was messing around with gloves on in pregame, seeing how that felt. It's a cold, chilly day. Keep an eye on whether or not grip may be a problem today. Golson says he has to operate with more savvy. He has to be smarter with the football. Now, this is a familiar refrain we've been hearing for most of the season. But 17 turnovers in six games, you're not going to win many. Golson, complete first down to Chris Brown. So on third and 10, Golson converts to Brown for 22. Great job of timing on the throw with Chris Brown. He's not wide open. On the release right up the field, great timing on the throw. Put it on the outside shoulder. Chris Brown turns it up. That's the only area that Northwestern will bring pressure was third and long. They brought it there, man-to-man -man coverage. Chichi Araguza was providing some pressure on Golson, but he got it off for the first down. And the Irish from the 39. And Golson on the keeper left side with a first down and racing down the sidelines. He's going to outrace the last defender, Henry, and take it to the house. 61-yard run for Golson. Just an excellent decision, decision on the zone read. Put it in the belly, see the flow right up through the gap, and he's just taken off. Corey Robinson downfield making a block for him. But all Everett doesn't have to worry about ball security on this one. Out racing Travion Henry to the end zone. And Kyle Brinza in to attempt the extra point. And the brand new holder for Notre Dame. They've had some holding issues with the previous holder, Hunter Smith. So Malik Zaire, the backup quarterback, with his first holding duties, sets it down for Brinza to make it 7-0. Get a 61-yard run by Everett Golson. Career-long run for Golson. Good for six and a Notre Dame seven-nothing lead. So Notre Dame off to a quick lead as Brinza kicks toward Trayvon Green, and he's going to take it out from the goal line and up to the 25-yard line, where Northwestern will begin its first offensive series. So here comes Northwestern and Trevor Simeon and his first pass is on the money complete for about a gain of eight. And that's complete to Garrett Dickerson, the freshman super back. You look at the numbers for Simeon, who's really been hampered by a bad ankle that he sprained in the second game of the season. So he's been kind of on the mend as that pass was intended for the other super back, the guy that we expect to see a lot today, and that's Dan Vitale, number 40. So far, Northwestern, two empty back sets, spread it out and get rid of the ball quickly. They're very worried and concerned about pass protection today. Northwestern coming off a 10-9 loss to Michigan last week. Simeon slipped on a two-point conversion, which could have won the game for Northwestern as Fitzgerald gambled and went for the win. Here's a first down pass, complete from Simeon to Cam Dickerson. Good for seven yards as Northwestern moves the chains. Another quick quick catch by the quarterback and throw, quick game, get it out of my hands, get it into your hands, into his athletes. Was not a lot of scoring last week in the game against Michigan, to say the least. It was 0-0 at the half. And then Northwestern kind of kicked it in gear late. 
And to keep it on the ground, this is Justin Jackson, dangerous in the open field, and he's deep into Notre Dame territory. Finally dragged down at about the six-yard line, where it'll be first and goal Northwestern after a gain of 44 from Jackson. Jackson just stretching it, stretching it, puts his foot in the ground. Sheldon Day had a free arm, could not pull him down. Great open field running after the fact. And Alvidi's going to run it right up the middle and push the rush across for the touchdown. So Alvidi in just his second college game. He was stood up right at the goal line and then fell in. And it's a matter of whether his knee may have been down and the, the, the officials really took their time making the touchdown signal. And so this is Jack Mitchell in to tie it up for Northwestern. So they come right back after Notre Dame takes it down in a hurry. 44-yard run by Justin Jackson was the key. The freshman helping to set up after Northwestern's longest rush of the season. Sets it up for Matt Alvidi. And the Wildcats have tied the Irish at seven. Well, indeed, a lot has changed since the 35 days have transpired between the last home game for Notre Dame. When we left here the last time, Doug, they were fifth ranked in the playoff chase, now down to 18 with those two losses to Arizona State and Florida State. A win against Navy in between there. But Notre Dame has its sights set on a big bowl game of the New Year's Day sixes as they're now seven all here with Northwestern. Carlisle juggles the kickoff from Mitchell and then Gets it across the 25, spinning his way close to around the 28-yard line where the Irish will set up with their second series. Second down and seven, and the end around coming this way, looking for some room is precise, and he's got nowhere. In fact, he loses four, which will bring up third and long. Great job on the backside by Dean Lowry, staying home, reading the play in front of him, doing his responsibility, stays upfield, and precise can't make a miss. So third and 11 as the Wildcats sniff that one out. Six foot six over there, Lowry. He may tip a few passes today. He had a couple tips last week. Dolson hanging in there. Now he's going to run it out. And he's going to be caught from behind just across the 45 yard line by Efati Odenabo. And so that'll bring up fourth down in the punting unit for Notre Dame. So Northwestern holds. Northwestern decided to play coverage, go three man rush. Everett had to hold on to the football and just too long a down and distance to convert. There's Tom Ruby gets on an active Navy SEAL, a part of the special team unit for Northwestern, as Tony Jones, who muffed a punt last week against Michigan, which led to his score. Calls it in there. First and ten. Northwestern beginning deep in its own territory. Sending it back in there at quarterback. And he gives it to Justin Jackson, who's got not much to work with. Yeah, back to Niles Morgan. Niles is a probably a better athlete, a much better athlete than Joe Schmidt. But he's a little bit slow in reacting. He's not full speed because he's thinking a little too much right now. Second and seven. The quick hit to Tony Jones. That'll bring up third down. As Niles Morgan was in there. Yeah, the coaches were saying he was just a bit too tentative. Got the physical tools, but in Van Gorder's words, he said he just didn't let it loose. And that'll come. They have really high expectations here out of Niles Morgan, one of the big recruits from last class. Here came the rush, and he gets rid of it quickly. And the ball is now loose. And that is Austin Collinsworth headed to the end zone for the touchdown. And how good must that feel for Austin Collinsworth? Hurt a couple of days before the season opener against Rice. Was hurt again. Hasn't played in more than a month. I'm looking at him in practice the other day, and I'm saying, oh, it's nice to see Austin back out there in practice. You know, he's out. Yeah, but he's not playing, right? And I say to Van Gorder, he's not going to be. Oh, well, no, he's in the mix. So it's it's a great opportunity for him. He still has that knee brace on. And I'm very sure a great happy moment for, him. for his parents. Chris Collinsworth, who you all know is 
Sunday night football analyst comes to all the games. Oh, a little bobble there by Zaire. And that ball is picked up and going the other way for Northwestern is Nick Van Hoos. So Zaire bobbles it. He's the new holder, and Van Hoos takes it the other way. So we, now what do you do? We That's, have put excitement into extra point and field goal. <laughs> Malik, I was saying, Malik bobbles it. It's on the ground. Brinza tries to kick it anyway. Turns into a block and going the other way. I talked with Brinza on the sideline before the game. I go, how's it going? How, how's the new holder situation? He goes, hey, it's coming along, which to me meant look out. Instead of 14 to 7, it's now 13 to 9. What a play by Van Hoos. Well, we haven't had any lack of drama in the start of this one as Nick Van Hoos takes the block extra point back for the Wildcats scores 13-9. This coming after Austin Collinsworth picks up a fumble and takes it back. And there is Malik Zaire. Brian Kelly said he could not bear to see a fourth bobble by the old holder, Hunter Smith. So that ended a streak of 88 straight point afters made by Kyle Brinza. And that's where we are right now with Northwestern having the ball right back with Trayvon Green running it out. Nope. Shy of the 30. So Northwestern set up at the 29. Sitting with a fake, rolls out of it. Pass is complete. And this is good for a first down to Vitale. The super back. That name unique to Northwestern. Gain a 17 for the latest super back. Don't let the body type and the number 40 fool you here. This kid is an athlete. He can run a 4 4 40. He looks like a fullback type, but he's got a little shake to him and a lot of speed. Vitaly gets it up to the 46. He's got it off to Prater. Devin Butler, the backup cornerback, who filled in for Riggs last week on the coverage to the stop. Vitaly out in front of him, making a block for him. The super back all over the field doing everything. Prater had a big game last week. Looks like one of the, you know, a true wide receiver for Northwest. Eight catches against Michigan Doug last week. That was a career high for Prater. Now down third and seven. Simeon looking at the sidelines. Northwestern already four for five on third down conversions. And that one batted down, which will bring up fourth down. Isaac Rochelle appeared to be the Irish defender who got a hand on it. You know, if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Rochelle does a nice job of just getting in the passing lane, getting a hand on it. Turns into a fourth down situation. And Simeon and the offense are still out there. By the way, Cody Riggs is not on the field in coverage. Well, they figure they're down here at the 36. Obviously, on a field goal range, they're going to give it a shot. Fourth down and seven. Here comes the pressure from Notre Dame. Simeon gets rid of it, and it's over the arms of Jones. So Notre Dame will take over on downs. Austin Collinsworth, who just came up with a fumble return for the touchdown on the coverage. Well, he had a shot on this. If he puts the ball a little bit to the outside and just flatten the receiver, they've got a completion conversion down inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, he had a little cushion on Collinsworth, but incomplete, and the Irish take over with 3.50 left in the first and leading by four. When Pat Fitzgerald took over the Northwestern job at the age of 31, he was the youngest Division I coach at the time by five years. 58 wins already, already the most in Northwestern history, and looking for another big one here today against Notre Dame. Irish leading 13 to 9, taking over first and 10 at their own 36. Golson drifting back, buying some more time, and the pass is a complete yes to Will Fuller right on the edge there for a gain of 11. 
Nice patient slide move when he had initially nothing there and gets it outside the fuller. Again, look how far inside the defensive back is. There's plenty of room on the outside of the field, outside the numbers to complete passes today for and, Notre Dame. And this is the ongoing discussion with Golson, Doug, is, is, you know, when do you take off? When do you buy that time? You know, when do you cut it loose? You don't want to lose that innate ability that he has. And then he shows there, a flag comes in as Golson got it to Fuller. Gain of 32. You can't take his aggressiveness away from him. He's just too good an athlete. Here again, he hangs on the ball, moves around, waits for something to develop, and this is trust. Initially, he didn't pull the trigger. He could have thrown the ball to the outside, so he moves in the pocket. Fuller's not open, but I'm going to give my guy a chance because I trust him. Will Fuller, great job going up high point in the ball. And Kelly telling us yesterday, I'm not going to change who Everett Golson is. That's who he is. We like that part of him. We just have to continue to try to coach him and manage him. This is Bolston, and he's got first down yardage. That aggressiveness in, in Golson is why Notre Dame has been in the position they were why they were in the national picture, why they were two years ago. And Folston showing off that innate ability as well. Yeah, as Mike Mayock said earlier, this could be a Folston day carrying the ball, be able to run the ball on this Northwestern defense. So the ball just outside the 10. Bolson, beautiful spin move in for the score. That's what he does so well. We had a conversation with him yesterday. He just says, I, ju I do. I've just got this ability you can't to make teach the right move at the right time. You can't teach that. He starts to cut it back. There's nothing there but an unblocked defender. Boom, so he's putting the ground, 360, and walk in the end zone. Chichi Araguza. And there is defense. Zaire. He and uh, the snapper Scott Daly were practicing in between series. This time Zaire gets it down and Brinza takes a fall there. So it's Tarian Folston with a beautiful spin move to get in for the latest Notre Dame score. 226 left in the first. Irish 20, Northwestern 9. In the 48th meeting between the Irish and the Wildcats, a series that has been dominated by Notre Dame 37, 8, and 2. First meeting since Northwestern's famous upset right here at Notre Dame Stadium 19 years ago. Irish on top 20 to 9. This is the first time Notre Dame has scored 20 points in the first quarter since they got 21 against Wake Forest back in the 2012 season. As Brinza sends it in play, down to Trayvon Green. He's got a little room on the left side. Brought down just short of the 25-yard line. And this is an offensive line, Doug, that has been really under fire lately. In fact, Fitzgerald kind of throwing up his hands, going, I don't know what else we can do to get these uh, guys working together and be more effective and more protective of Simeon. Justin Jackson had a big run earlier to set up Northwestern score. Last week they took seven sacks. They could not get rid of the foot. They could not go drop back pass at all. If they drop, I'm sorry, six sacks last week. If they drop back pass, it was a sack, and it cost them a couple scoring opportunities when they got down in the red zone. So they've just gone to the quick game. On third and ten, little draw here to Green up the middle for plenty of yardage. All the way down to the Notre Dame 30. Cole Loop finally tracked him down, but Trayvon Green. Good for 56 yards. A lot of defensive backs on the field. The dime package and a three-man rush. So it's wide open in the middle. They just run a draw, slice it, and get a lot more than they expected out of the run. And during this four-game streak where Notre Dame's been giving up big-time points, Doug, this has been one of the, the glaring weaknesses. Just all of a sudden, big runs up the middle against this Irish D. And they're going to be going up and down the field in the track meet with Northwestern. We'll reverse end around here to Jones. He outruns Trombetti, and Devin Butler finally bangs him out. A little trickery there by Northwestern. Gain of 12. 
This is a team that scored 16 points in the last 10 quarters. It shows you how young this defense is, and they just make mistakes, leave gaps open, and gashed for big plays. They're very young. Northwestern team also that has been ravaged by injuries. First and 10 from the 15 as they go up the middle to Jackson. They lost their best receiver before the season even started. Christian Jones had a season ending knee injury in camp. They had an explosive running back, Doug, named Benrick Mark, who transferred after he violated a team rule. He was a 1,300 yard rusher a couple of years ago. Miles Schuler, wide receiver, out today again with a hand issue. And up the middle goes Green. Close to the first down. It looks like the spot's going to give it to him. It's twice in a row on third down plays, on run, on pass situations, mixing in the run, increasing it. So it'll be first and goal for Northwestern as the final seconds tick off the first quarter of play. An active first quarter of play where we saw a little bit of everything. But the end of the first 15 at South Bend, Notre Dame 20, Northwestern 9 will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. Your first nine games, just three 30 plus yard plays on the season for Pat Fitzgerald's Northwestern team. Already two today, including a 44 yard run by Justin Jackson, which set up the first touchdown, and then Trayvon Green, a 45 yard scamper here on this drive, which sets up Northwestern. Just inside the five of Notre Dame with first and goal. Simeon looking for the corner route. Beautiful grab by Prater for the touchdown. Kyle Prater, six feet five, 235 pounds. The transfer from USC in his first year in a starting role comes up big with a beautiful grab here, Doug. Just a great design off a bunch look. The cluster of receivers, they change release, which creates leverage on Tranquil, the safety, going to the corner of the end zone. It is, it's an easy route for, for a good, tall receiver against the safety. Mitchell with the extra point. Brings the Wildcats back within four in the opening seconds of the second quarter. Yeah, before the season began, most of the worrying concerns for Notre Dame was on defense, and then Van Gorder's defense came out of the blocks with what we just showed you with a very good performance. He said, the guys have been absorbing it faster than I ever would have thought, and then now we've got more of a learning curve with a lot of young freshmen in there for the unit. Here's Carlisle bringing it out with a nice run across the 20. And that ball is bobbled. In the shotgun formation, Matt Hegarty and Golson not connecting, and that's going to result in a loss of eight as we send you down to Mike. We talked about that offensive line under Harry Heastand, and I, I really think they've been maligned a little bit more than, than they deserve this year. And so far today, especially center Matt Hagerty doing a great job up front protecting Everett and also in the run game. Despite that last little bobble, but on second and 18, Golson now improvising and slipping to the turf. Yeah. You know, on the snap that, that Golson fumbled, he wasn't even looking. The ball was snapped early. His eyes are up. He's taking his read. The ball gets snapped. And then the second thing that surprises me about this is it was on the ground and Everett just jumped on it. He's had enough of the turnovers, no scooping it up and taking off and trying to make a big play. He decided, all right, don't magnify the mistake. So the Irish in reverse here, third and 24. Golson looking for a big chunk of it. And he gets the first down out to Procise. Huge gain on third and 24 of 33 for CJ Procise. Procise Pro Slice is lined up in the slot. There he is. And he just runs up the seam. And the, the, the thing that made this happen was it was a three-man rush. And Everett Golson, Golson was very patient, waited. Procise did a nice job of idling down in the seam to give him a window to put the ball. 
At the bunch formation at the top, and now Koyak, the tight end, sets up on the left side in front of Fulston, looking for a hole, not much there. And Cam McDaniel comes in on third down and eight. He was the man that Golson and Brian Kelly depended on last week because Folston in the pass protection department just did not get the job done last week. No doubt. Cam did an excellent job in the second half. You know what? He gives Everett Golson the trust factor back there to stand in the pocket and deliver the ball. And it's an attitude that a running back has to have back there, Doug, to pass protect for his quarterback. And Golson feels pressure from the other end, and now it's a picked off. And running down the field for Northwestern is Anthony Walker. And Fuller is finally going to knock him out before he gets to the end zone. Inside the five. On this particular play, Cam McDaniel free releases. And Hall pulls off to cover him, and Everett stuck holding the football, gets blindsided. The ball is out. That's Gibson coming around the corner to make the hit. The ball is loose. Walker. It bounces steps off. Up. The it's another of interception. Lombard. It's it's Everett trying to make a play when taking the sack would be a better option. It bounces off the helmet of Christian Lombard, the right tackle for Notre Dame. And it ends up a 66 yard interception return for Anthony Walker, a freshman who's taken over the middle linebacking position for Northwestern. And on first and goal, Jackson looking for the end zone for the touchdown. And Northwestern takes over the lead. Turnovers turning into short fields, quick touchdown turnaround. Everett has got to protect the football. You can't try to make a play when it's not there. Know when to tuck it under and take the sack. Pressure coming from the backside from Gibson. Right off the helmet of Lombard, and now Jack Mitchell with a chance to give Northwestern, with 9 12 left in the half, a three point lead. First lead of the game for Northwestern. Three trips to the red zone, three touchdowns. Off the helmet of Lombard and into the hands of Walker. Jackson takes it in for the score, and Fitzgerald's loving it. Ribbon Northwestern team today with its first lead of the game, 23 to 20. As you look at Anthony Walker, who provided the interception, what set up the Jackson touchdown, and Golson now has 18 turnovers in the last seven games. And that one leads to yet another score by an opponent. A little confusion there between Amir Carlisle and Cam McDaniel, but Carlisle takes it and then backpedals to the 15. So if it's Gerald and the Wildcats pumped up here, Doug. Here's Folston the other way, looking for a hole. Beautiful cut. Kind of a subtle cut back up the field for another big game. Greg Kuhar on the stop for the Wildcats. He sets up the block by Procise by, by widening a guy and putting his foot in the ground and cutting it up. Nice patience on that run. Folston, seven carries, 51 yards. And a couple of huge games against Florida State and Navy earlier in the year, 100 plus yard games and diving on second and four. Looks like Golson's going to pick up the first down. He does. And that's the kind of athletic ability that when you got a quarterback of his talents, you can pick up that first down as we send you down to Mike again. Yeah, you just mentioned Falston, seven carries, 51. He's averaging over seven yards a carry. And the best way to calm down all the turnovers is let that offensive line beat on them for a while. Well, here's Cam McDaniel. Maybe gets a yard or two. 
We talked earlier this season about the reconfiguration. Earlier in the season, Doug up front, Ronnie Stanley, the only guy to stay put there, but Nick Martin being moved from center to left guard, Hegarty in there at center, Elmer and Lombard, who added the assist on the previous interception off the back of his helmet. Yeah, he did. I really didn't think they played that poorly last week. There were other factors that came into play, whether it was running backs or tight ends. The fake to McDaniel, Golson keeps it, kind of dances his way close to another first down. Travion Henry finally knocked him out. Back down to Mike. And Danny, it's really interesting because in Brian Kelly's DNA, I think he's just going to, he wants to throw the football. That's who he is. And I think to him, what did he say? He want, for, forget the three wood. I'm hitting the driver, <laughs> fellas. Right? Some, sometimes I hit driver when I should be pulling out the three wood. All I know is Northwestern leads by 3 23 to 20. Close to the first down is Folston. Believe they're going to give it to him. And that's because of the turnover. Turnovers, defense is not playing well. Even though it feels offensively for Notre Dame like they can do anything they want, they're trailing 23 to 20. Sooner or later, you're going to die by those. And that's what happened in the 80 degrees in Tempe, Arizona last week. Golson avoiding pressure and just throwing it out of bounds. That's what you like to see at that point, right? <laughs> Two things about that play that you'd like to see. Number one, Everett's instincts there on the sprint out were to pull up because he couldn't get the corner. And he remembers last week getting hit from the blind side on a throw that turned into an interception. So he started to slow down and then he said, no, I can't do that. Got wider, threw the ball out of bounds. First down line brought to you by the UPS store. So on second down and 10 of the Wildcat 37. Golson just rushing by the pressure and downfield as he interfered with. Yes, Corey Robinson is going to be the beneficiary of a defensive pass interference flag here. Pass interference, defense number nine, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's called on Jimmy Hall, 6 2 against Corey Robinson, 6 4. All right, Corey's got the height. He's open, he's down there. But the bottom line here was Everett had a defender hanging all over him and still tried to deliver a football 40 yards downfield, which is a scary throw. They get the flag out of the call primarily because Corey does a good job of pulling up and going after the football, but maybe an ill advised throw with a guy hanging on your back. Robinson had that uh, rare bobble last week. One of the interceptions that Golson threw was bobbled by Robinson. Should, shouldn't have been an interception, but. Again, it goes on the Golson resume. First and ten. Golson to pass. He's got Fuller, and he's got the touchdown. It's a great job of selling a hard play action. Fuller's one on one with Van Hoos out on the wide side. Sell the play action. Pull it out. Fuller stuck his foot in the ground and ran a nice double move corner route and beats Van Hoos. He sells it to the middle of the field. Boom, back to the corner. Plenty of room for the throw. Beautifully delivered, and somebody held on to the ball. How about that? Fuller's having a nice game. Let's see if Zaire can hold on to the snap here. Yes, it's down, and it's good by Brinza. So Notre Dame comes back to regain the lead, 27-23, as the Irish and the Wildcats are going to go into the locker room separated by a mere four points as we send you down to Catherine. Coach, uh, a lot of missed opportunities and drop balls in that first half, but your quarterback, Trevor Simeon, is playing one of his best games of the season. What can you say about the way he controlled the first half of this game? Well, I like the way he's responding. You're right. We've got a lot of self-inflicted wounds, but he hasn't gotten down. He's responded boldly, and we're going to need him for the next 30 minutes. You've been on this stage before. You know what it's like to win in this stadium. What do you tell your team at halftime? I'm old. It's 19 years ago. <laughs> These guys know how to win. We just got to go do what we do, trust ourselves, play Wildcat football in the second half. Was there anything you saw in Notre Dame that you didn't expect to see? They're a very talented, well-coached team. No, we expected everything, but uh, it's going to be a heck of a next 30 minutes. Coach, Thanks. good luck. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Thanks. Go Cats. Fitzgerald saying earlier this week, I'm not here for nostalgia. I'm here to win a football game as team trails by 4, 27-23. Stay tuned for the Discover Card halftime report as we're going to send you to Jimmy Roberts in our NBC studio. Notre Dame 27, Northwestern 23 at the half.
Well, 19 years ago, Northwestern came into Notre Dame Stadium as 28-point underdogs and pulled off the upset. 17-point dogs here, trailing by four at the break. As you take a look at the first half statistics, Golson has cleaned up the turnovers but uh, did throw an interception, which led to a Northwestern touchdown. As Northwestern is within reach, let's send it down to Catherine. All right, Dan, thank you very mo much. I spoke to head coach Brian Kelly there just in the break, and he said that the drop balls and the missed opportunities, he thought they didn't cost them too much because they were able to make up for them on the back end. He said he did think that the missed field goal and the drop snap on the extra point did affect them. He said defensively, still no Max Redfield. He plans on going with Austin Collinsworth and Drew Tranquil here in the second half, guys. Thank you, Catherine. Again, Max Redfield was the big change on defense. Had started all nine games before Drew Tranquil got the start and Austin Collinsworth did have an interception or actually returning it for a touchdown fumble so a lot happened in that first half Brinza who has not been sharp even though there was a muffed hold by Zaire the kick taken by Trayvon Green out to the 25 yard line where the Wildcats will begin the second half well with the two kicks it's six points it's three three on the missed field goal one on the missed extra point and two going the other way so it turns into a six point swing. And again Simeon the victim of five drop passes 15 of 25 for 149 yards one touchdown the one interception. But he has looked healthy and has looked mobile on that ankle which he sprained in the second game of the season that ball tipped at the line of scrimmage it was up for grabs incomplete Isaac Rochelle getting a hand on it. Some things you just can't control as a quarterback sometimes those defensive linemen get that hand up in the passing lane batted up in the air. But this is the type of luck Notre Dame's had lately that one falls to the ground where Notre Dame's tip ball winds up an interception. On second and ten Sidney's pass complete to Dickerson who had the big play this one for a first down Dickerson had a 60 yard reception in the first half part of three big plays for Northwestern that were huge for the Wildcats that one good for 12. Cody Riggs is back on the field playing there he was in coverage there actually went for a strip again. And up the middle is Justin Jackson. Jackson with 11 carries for 72 yards looking for another 100 yard game for the freshman running back not real big Doug 511 185 pounds but proved that he can pull off the big play he had that 44 yard rush earlier in the first half ball at the 41 second and seven Simeon going down the far sideline and that is a beautiful catch made by Prater. Kyle Prater with a beauty for 29 on the outside versus Cole Luke gets a step on him but sees the ball in high points it goes up strong with his hands and catches the ball hangs on to it actually Cole Luke got a hand in there and still couldn't knock it loose in fact Prater took it in one hand to avoid that Wildcats all the way down to the Irish 30 just like that simming to the air again close to another first down as Justin Jackson out of the backfield so Northwestern comes out of the locker room and on the move. Positive plays on first down balls out of his hand when they decide to run it they pick up three or four still getting rid of the ball quickly. This is everything they've wanted to do today. That was Jackson's first catch of the game. And on the ground is Simeon a good fake they fooled practically the entire Notre Dame defense with a fake up the middle and Simeon takes it out for 16. Well when you run the football you sell it pull it out nice read on his behalf not exactly a lot of shake at the end of the run. But he is a mobile guy that can make plays for you. And he's got some decent speed. Again, he's been hampered by that ankle sprain. That's his longest run of the year. And on first and goal, he lets his running back, Justin Jackson, have a go out of it. Not much. Rochelle was there among the blue shirts to meet him. Down in this area, if you run it, my theory is if you're outside the five yard line and you run the ball on first down, you're committing to run the ball three times in a row and try to get it in. Otherwise, go play action in this situation. Go play action, try to get to the end zone. On second and goal, looking for a hole is green. Maybe got a yard. That'll bring up third and goal from the four. 
tranquil, tranquil among other Irish defenders there to bring him down. Their favorite runs are power O down there. They pull a lot of guards down by the goal line, which I'm not a big fan of, but they seem to do very well. But now, like I said, if you committed to running the ball early, it's very difficult to run the ball in three times from out there. So now you're in a passing situation. Northwestern trying to make an opening statement here in the opening drive of the second half. Third and goal from the four. Notre Dame defense trying to hold them to at least a field goal attempt. Simeon pumps once and down he goes at the 14. Sheldon Day, whose motor runs all day and night for the loss of 10, bringing Simeon down and the field goal unit for Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald described him as relentless, and Sheldon keeps coming. He's not immediately in the rush. Secondary does a great job in coverage, forcing Simeon to hold the ball. Sheldon gets there. This is Jack Mitchell, who was a preferred walk-on for Northwestern when he arrived on campus a couple of years ago. But ended up playing baseball. He's a starting outfielder for the baseball team. He's never been a part of the football team until he came back to the team this season. This is a 31 yarder. He hasn't had one past 30 yards all season, but he gets that one to go. And Northwestern is on the board first in the second half, getting within one of Notre Dame 27 26. Brian Kelly with a win trying to become the first Notre Dame coach to begin his career with five straight eight plus win seasons but Northwestern is certainly not going to give it to him tonight. And here Carlisle comes out across the 20 and the 25 where Golson and company will begin their first series of the second half. And here he is with good field position now at the Irish 45 to begin this latest drive and this is Folston who gets a couple. Well right away with the shoulder issue they go back to running the football a little bit and they're in that pistol look that Mike Mayak was talking about earlier. It's more of a run formation or a short gun run formation. Second and seven here is Folston around the left edge and he's corralled back taken by Matthew Harris. On that last series really the most valuable player along with Jalen Smith Sheldon Day 91 you can see him there the left knee. He gets caught up in some traffic and it gets bowed and Day went off to the sideline. Limping. They can ill afford to lose one of the real stars up front Sheldon Day on the sidelines right now. We'll see if he comes back in the next series third and two Ben Koyak hauls it in for his first catch of the game. Big tight end who has been on the field with the most snaps of anyone other than Golson this year for the Notre Dame offense. He's been a busy guy and in fact Kelly wanted to kind of give him some breaks. So Durham Smythe got some action last week at that tight end position. Picks up the first down and on the ground they go to Cam McDaniel. Cam on that McDaniel. last completion of Golson's he turned it loose put it on the numbers but was kind of cringing after the fact kind of shaking his head like it's still still not right. Five minute mark of the third quarter Northwestern trailing by just one. Play clock getting down there on third and seven. More pressure on Golson, and he's just able to get it away. That was Chichi Araguzo coming in on Golson, the leading tackler for Northwestern. Cam McDaniel in the backfield looks to his right to go pick up someone off the edge to the right side. Realizes he didn't come and loses Araguzo coming on the strong side. So the guy that is very reliable in the backfield. Makes his first mistake in pass protection. On fourth and seven, it appears that the Irish are going to go for it. The 
Olsen calls for it just before the play clock expires. Has time. Fires over the middle, and it's complete to Corey Robinson, who drops it, and Carlisle falls on it. So they get the first down. There was a uh, heart-stopping moment there when Robinson coughed it up. He stands in there tall. Golson looking down the barrel, fires it over the middle. He had to wait on Robinson to clear the underneath and find an open window. We talked with Golson this week, and he said, you know, I had a couple passes tipped. Maybe as a shorter quarterback, like a Drew Brees or a Russell Wilson, I've got to move and wait for passing lanes. There he waited, allowed Robinson to clear, and hit him in the middle of the field. That was a heady play by Amir Carlisle to quickly jump on that and keep the first down and the drive alive. Holston bring up second down as we approach the four-minute mark of the third quarter. Chance Carter on the stop for Northwestern. Holston getting closer to another 100 yard game 14 carries 80 yards. How about a big time play on fourth down there though fourth down edge of the scoring zone long field goal field goal units had issues. Let's go for it. Everett stands in there and Corey Robinson makes a play although he put it put it on the ground at the end. Right out to Fuller. And Fuller, first down, inside the 10, then shows that speed, sprinting to the end zone for the touchdown. Second touchdown of the game for Fuller, 12 now on the season, good for 23. Just by sheer numbers, they've got him outnumbered on the outside. The throw goes out. Steve Elmer, 79, with a big block. Fuller up inside of Elmer and sprints to the end zone using his speed. And Fuller has himself another 100-yard game. Five catches, 100 yards. Malik Zaire back out there to hold it for Brinza. No problem there. And Notre Dame on that big fourth down conversion, which kept this drive alive, ends in a Will Fuller touchdown. 336 left in the third. Notre Dame gets a little more breathing room up by eight. 34 to 26 on the latest Will Fuller score. The sellout crowd at Notre Dame Stadium. Cheering on the Irish in their first game at home in more than a month. Latest touchdown putting the Irish up front 34 to 26 with 336 left in the third quarter. Notre Dame comes back on defense. They're going to be without a couple of the key players up front as Brinza. All of a sudden, who's got new life since that into the end zone. And Northwestern will come out to begin at the 25. Simeon 19 to 30, 195 yards, touchdown and one pick. Let's see what Northwestern can do to respond to that Notre Dame touchdown. Keep it on the ground on first and ten. Nice moves by Justin Jackson. Picks up the first down. Cody Riggs, who's back out there on the field. Now check that. Devin Butler, who's been filling in for Cody Riggs with the stop, but after a gain of 15. Again, a stretch play where they just get a wide. He finds a crease and heads north and south. And Jackson has himself his fourth 100-yard game of the season. Western quickly into Notre Dame territory thanks to Justin Jackson and the big 15 yard penalty assessed against Oregon. Gain of four for Jackson on that carry. Well, Northwestern is doing what they want. They're running the football for good average per carry here on first down, getting themselves in good situations. Second and six, gain of one or two. Again, Sheldon Day's knee got buckled. Daniel Cage. Hasn't seen the field since the first half either. And Cody Riggs as well off the field. So there are three key players not in the lineup on Notre Dame's defense. And certainly Day and Cage probably out for the remainder of the game. And Max Redfield, who gave up his starting job to Drew Tranquil. At the start of this game is on 
The defensive secondary for Notre Dame as Simeon tucks it in and slides in short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth and short. Again in an area field here that Notre Dame was just in and went for it on fourth and seven. Now Northwestern, same situation, definitely going to go for it. And they are right to the line. Van Gorder said, let's go, guys. Northwestern's on the line. Will we see that sneak that you talked about? Simeon brought down by Martini, and he picks up the first down. He does a great job in short yardage quarterback sneaks. Sees no contain on the outside of the left, bounces it out. Greer Martini almost makes the play on him. He's the one now filling in for Morgan now that Morgan took the penalty and was pulled. Little risky, but he almost broke it for a long run. All right, so on fourth and short, Simeon picks up the first down with a sneak. Back in business with a fresh set of downs. Simeon standing back, pass complete. That one to Green, who tries to get out of the grasp of Farley. As we're down to the one minute mark in the third quarter. Northwestern trying to snap a four game losing streak against the heavily favored Irish here at home. This is not the same offense that I've seen on film for the last few weeks. Second and four. Green with a carry. Not much. And keeping themselves good down in distance. Third and three, third and two. Manageable situations. Northwestern hanging around, trailing by just eight against Brian Kelly's Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Notre Dame trying to move their record to eight and two. Northwestern at three and six, just trying to snap that four game losing streak. At the end of three, Notre Dame 34, Northwestern 26 will return to the stadium after these messages from your local station. Was the scene just a moment ago while in commercial, Pat Fitzgerald firing up his Wildcats at Northwestern. Faced with a third and two here at the 25. Just a lot of confidence in his voice. Absolutely. After we score, we're kicking it. Not if, not when. You know, it's it's a definite attitude of it doesn't matter. We're down eight right now. We'll kick this one. We're going to score again later. Third and two. Yeah, he had his mind made up last week against Michigan when they went for the two-point conversion, which didn't work out. But a huge third down and two. And this is Albedi in here in the Wildcat. The snap is wide. He's able to scoop it up, and Notre Dame drops him for a loss. Niles Morgan, who spent some time on the sideline after that unsportsmanlike conduct, was first to get Alvidi. It starts with a bad snap down and to the left. He had to reach for it, and then when he picks his head up, Niles is there shooting the gap, running through. It looked like a true quarterback sweep. It was a run all the way, but he couldn't get to the edge. That now means it's fourth and six. And a field goal attempt here by Jack Mitchell. This from 46. Remember, early in the game, he made his first field goal from outside 30 yards. And the baseball player, the starting outfielder, knocks it through for Northwestern. So he drilled the line drive to left center there for a base hit. <laughs> that had good velocity on it to the warning track. Good hold. Mitchell is now 9 of 11 on the year. And Pat Fitzgerald and company get away with three points to close within 34-29. So that is a big one. Mitchell, who just brought the Wildcats within five, kicks off to Art Amir Carlisle, who brings it out. Carlisle streaking up the right side. Pretty good return up close to the 30. Bolston looking for a hole. Patient pays off. Stiff arms one, two guys, and gets close to the first down. It was a beautiful piece of running by Bolston, who picks up eight. Boy, you know, there was nothing there. He waited, waited, ducks under and through, gets out the back side of it. You're right. It was patience at first. Finally picked a little hole in there and got through. 
and guys, that was only his fourth carry of the entire half. You've got an you've got a lead here. Run some clock, play action. I'd love to see him stay with the run game a little more. There's the line on Folston with a one touchdown earlier in the game. Now a key third and two. Golson will try to get it through the air and does so to Koyak into Northwestern territory to the 48. Gain of 14 for the big tight end. Boy, Koyak was totally uncovered on the play, went downfield, realized it, snap hook, give me the ball, right in the chest, great timing, conversion on third down, a key conversion on third down after a Northwestern score, and you don't want to give the ball away right away with an opportunity for them to come down to take the lead. Second catch of the game for Koyak. So Notre Dame with a first and 10 at the Northwestern 48, thanks to the Koyak first down pickup. Golson to the air, way downfield, Fuller's open, he's got it. First and goal, Notre Dame. I was beginning to question whether or not Everett's arm was feeling any good. Could he go upfield with the ball? He answers that right away as Fuller just runs by Van House, Van Hoos. Just runs by him, the ball is there. Golson had a chance to step into this throw and turn it loose. Sure, he probably winced after that throw, but he got the ball out there. Big time completion. Notre Dame setting up here at the 13 yard line. We'll try to get in the end zone again. This is Bolston. Good hit there at about the 12 yard line. Godwin Iguabuque. Redshirt freshman. Put the hit on Folston. You know, he's stepping in on the field for Henry, who just got injured, and Campbell is the other safety. Uh, when Campbell was hurt earlier in the year, Igwe Bouquet was a starter for four games, had three interceptions against Wisconsin. Empty backfield as Cameron McDaniel sets up to the right in the slot. Golson looking over the middle to the end zone and not able to hang on as Koyak had he been able to make that catch. It would have been the touchdown for sure as just was a little high even for six foot five. Ben. This is a shake route little stick move and back to the middle balls a little bit high but in a position where he could make the play put a nice move on Walker the linebacker was open there was a window for it ball sailed just a little bit on Everett Golson. Do we check that off as another drop or are we going to give Koyak? No, I, I'm calling it a drama quarterback. That's a drop. <laughs> okay. In your eyes it is. Huh? Catch it. You got to make that. Third and eight. Be big if Northwestern could just get out of here with a field goal, but that's not going to happen because Fuller's got another one. Third of the game. Will Fuller, number seven, working from the outside, running the seam post route inside. Great timing on the throw. Again, the ball's a little high. No fear. Goes up, grabs it in traffic, and hangs on for the touchdown. Will Fuller is scoring touchdowns left and right right now. And Notre Dame is going to go for two here. In the 11-point difference. Yep. Make it a 42-29 game. That's a little too much math for me, figuring it's 13 better than 12 at this point. There's the fake to Brown. And now Golson running out, looking for somebody. And the two point conversion's no good. So it indeed is an 11 point difference. With ten and a half left. Somewhat of a curious decision there by Brian Kelly to go for two points. Extra point would have given it a 41 29 difference of 12 points. As Brins's kick is taken at the six yard line by Trayvon Green. And Green gets it just across the 25. All right, Northwestern. Gonna have to make something happen on this drive with just six minutes left. Either a field goal or a touchdown. Half pass complete to Vitali. 
Stops the clock with 5.58 left. Gain of eight for Vitali. Right on the boundary. Vitali, he is, like I said early in the game, he's not a fullback. He is a receiver. He runs well. He catches the ball extremely well. That's just a second catch. Yeah. Simeon keeps it around the right side, around the 40-yard line. He does pick up the first down. Nice little zone read. Sees Rochelle close down, keeps the ball. Easy first down conversion. Wildcats have it quickly up to their own 39. Simeon with time. Flat comes in. Pass is complete to Trayvon Green. He gets sandwiched by a couple of Irish defenders. Personal foul. Defense number 53. Hands in the face. 15-yard penalty tacked on to the end of the run. First down. And that is big on Yatupo. That moves it up the field in a hurry. Yep. And when the clock is an issue, you need two scores five and a half minutes ago. The extra 15 really helps. The hands, hands to the face. Yeah. You know, I, I've never played in the mix in the line there. I, this happens way more often than I would expect it to happen. With that penalty, it brings it all the way out to the Notre Dame 42. Over the middle complete. And that should be another first down to Warren Long. Simeon makes quick decisions, gets a good read on coverage, and the ball is out. He, he goes to the guy that has the best opportunity to get open and turns it loose all the time. Boomy reads coverage, everybody dropping deep. Where's my back? Right there. Get it to him. And he's got another first down here just at the 31 of Notre Dame. Knifing in there was Farley. Simeon's going to run this one, and he's going to pick up another first down. Close to the 15 before Drew Tranquil finally brings him down after a gain of 15. So this is going just about as well as Northwestern could expect. Moving in a hurry, always a good shot. It's Farley comes in untouched inside. They lose contain on the outside. Aquara lost the contain there, and he turns it loose. He's athletic enough to make plays with his legs as well. Simeon down to the goal line and unable to hang on there is Mike McHugh. He was a little off balance when the ball sailed in there, but was this catchable? Looks like his feet slipped out from under a little at the last second as he's reaching for the ball. Yeah, he gets his hands on. Hey, what the heck? I'm a quarterback. Catch it. No, well, yeah. I'm not going to call that one. I'm not calling that one a drop either. Good throw there by Simeon, though, again showing the arm strength. Second down and 10. Pressure again from Farley, dumps it out underneath, and inside the 10 yard line is Tim Hanrahan. That's his first catch of the game, the eighth different receiver for Simeon to find. Boy, this was an all out blitz. They throw the screen on the backside, it almost scores. They've called the screen play twice in great situations and come out with very positive plays on it. Ball is spotted at the six. Simeon looks right. Nothing there. Walks into the end zone for the score. And now you got to go for now two. Now it's time to go for two. And now Brian Kelly is looking at the clock and saying, maybe we should have kicked that extra point. Nine plays, 73 yard drive in just under two minutes. Simeon just crazily walks in with nobody around him. So relaxed looking in the pocket. It wasn't a design quarterback draw. It was a pass play. He looked up the field, didn't like it. The seas parted. He just steps through. Official Whoa. picks off a Notre Dame defender as well. Now the ball is set off to the right, which would make you think it's going to be a roll left, but they left enough room to maybe there's always some kind of trick play off two point plays. What about that uh, Simeon sneak? Even though he's in the shotgun here. And they plow it up the middle to Warren Long, who gets it done. 40 37, Notre Dame. Great leg drive, continuing to push to get into the end zone, get this big two point conversion. Watch him keep the legs rolling after contact, keep digging with the legs. It looked like he may get stopped. He finished two yards into the end zone. 
So touchdown for Northwestern. Two point conversion is good. 4 10 left. They trail by just a field goal. 37 points tonight by the Wildcats so far. The most ever scored by a Northwestern team against Notre Dame in a series that began back in 1889. As Notre Dame again gives up huge points to yet another team for the fifth week in a row here, Doug. Two kickers on the field. Notre Dame ready for an onside kick. There's still over four minutes. Jack Mitchell and Hunter Nicewander. This is a low driving kick by Nicewander, who is now the backup punter. Amir Carlisle takes it across the 31, 35. Good for he's finally brought down at about the 38. Game already has given up three turnovers today. Northwestern four. Another high-scoring game in which Notre Dame is involved with. Here's Golson, and he's tripped up back in the backfield by Jimmy Hall, the linebacker for a loss of three. This is a huge play on the loss on the play. I think Everett, if you pull this, you're supposed to be, he's supposed to be running to the left. Instead, he saw a big gap to the right, initially took off for it, and, and made a mistake. He probably should have just given the ball to start with. Brings up second down and 13. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We've reached the two-minute mark. Maybe time to start using your timeouts on defense. Wilson helping that clock, play clock all the way down. Out to the left side of Fuller. Make sure he stays in bounds and gets it over to the 48. Iguabuque brought him down. Notre Dame had given up a whopping 78 points off turnovers coming into this game, Doug, and they've added to that dubious mark in this game with three more turnovers. Simeon just wants a chance. He's feeling good today. His legs have gotten into play in the fourth quarter, taking off and running. He just wants to stop here and get the ball back. For Notre Dame, third and nine. Everett Golson loves to use his legs in these situations. If something is not clear cut to him, I would expect Kelly to be a little bit aggressive here in the play call. If he doesn't like it, he's taking off and looking for a big play. He'll, he'll make, extend the play on his own. He's got Cam McDaniel back there, the best pass protector from the running back perspective to Golson's left. That guy surveys the field and tries to Keep Golson safe back there on third and nine. Golson escapes it, fires to the far side. Flag comes in. As it was intended for Corey Robinson. Yeah, Hall's not looking back for the ball, but I think this is one you keep the flag in your pocket on. The ball's landed. Pass interference, defense number nine. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Gigantic call against Fitzgerald and the Wildcats. In the slot, Corey Robinson running down the field, looking, looking, looking. Kind of just turned to see the ball. The ball lands 10 yards short of him, and he, he basically trips on the, his own. There is some contact. Hall does not get his head turned around at all. But that's one I think, I, I think you keep that flag in your pocket there, and Northwestern would be getting the ball with a minute 42 left. Well, suffice to say, it easily could have gone either way. Instead, Notre Dame on third and nine gets a first and ten. And now they can just chew the clock and run the timeout. Northwestern with one timeout left is going to burn that final timeout right now with a minute 36. And now the Wildcats are out of timeouts. Second down and eight. They give it to Cam McDaniel. Oh, it's out. McDaniel drops it on the ground. The steadiest of the running backs in Northwestern. Appear to it. Yes. Wildcat ball with a minute 28 left. Can you believe that McDaniel so steady relied upon especially at moments like this in the game. 
The last person you would expect the ball to come out from. Campbell rips at it with his right arm and pulls it out. Is, it, is there a possibility of him being down? It's really close. My initial thought was that the ball was out. It's gone. It's out. It's on its way out before the knee comes to the ground. Yeah, this will be interesting to see how Simeon can work his way down the field here, Doug, with no timeouts. Pass complete. Clock will run. The key here is you'd like to get first down yardage, and that clock stops, and you have a chance to line back up. Plays like that where you're short of the first, it's running. Yep, second and two after the gain of eight. That's going to be a first down, and the ball is loose. Dickerson let it get away from him. I don't know if it's the cold conditions, but the ball is just coming out way too easily. It gets knocked out of bounds, actually saving Northwestern some time. They'll get lined up. The clock should restart because it was fumbled from inbounds. Fumble out of bounds. The ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. The clock will wind on my signal. Again, they only need a field goal, so there's plenty of time to nickel and dime. Ball is up at the 43. But no timeouts. If you stop for short of a first down, the clock is running. They need to be thinking get at least to the 30-yard line of Notre Dame to give Mitchell a shot. Simeon at midfield. That ball is complete. And on the run is Prater trying to get out of bounds, which he does. At the 40, gain of 17. So now they're about 10 yards or so away from a potential distance that Mitchell could hit from. Great job of breaking the tackle and getting to the sideline because he was going to be short of a first down and the clock would have been running. Now it's stopped. That ball's complete. Again to Prater. And they're getting closer and closer within range. Devin Butler on the coverage. All right, now once you're on the edge of field goal range is when a defense decides we're going to turn it loose and come after you and create a sack to push it back, or you were vulnerable for a big play. And yeah, there was Mitchell, a starting outfielder on the baseball team for Northwestern in his first season playing football. Simeon trying to get him in position. Prater tight roping there, and that ball is complete. That was a precision throw. It was. And the ball is inside the 30. It's now at the 28. Jalen Smith was out in the flat ready to take that away and Simeon just turned it loose and they are within range even though Mitchell hasn't had a lot of tries at long field goals again came into this game without making one from over 30 here looks like man coverage here for the first time in the drive here's your opportunity both offensively or defensively to make a big play. Simeon down the sidelines incomplete and he wanted the six foot five Prater again. Boy if he had kept that inbounds Prater might have made a play on it. He had an opportunity here working one on one with Butler. Butler does get his hands on him which is a, a bonus from last week. He, he had he struggled in one on one coverage there. He did a very decent job of staying right with him. Yeah big height differential there. Butler only six feet Prater six feet five second and ten 30 seconds to go Simeon down the middle and he was a little high looking for McHugh third and ten clock stop with 29 to go Wow all out blitz man to man coverage all over the field Austin Collinsworth in, in coverage trips and falls it's a touchdown if the ball's on the mark the ball is spotted at the 28. It would be about a 45, 46 yard attempt if they're not able to get any more yardage from this point right now on third and 10. Simeon backpedals. That one high, incomplete, and it'll bring up fourth and 10, intended for Dickerson. Well, again, a great opportunity for completion in the ball sales on Simeon. 45 yarder to tie the game. So here comes Jack Mitchell. 
First year of the Northwestern football team, a 45-yard attempt. He made one from 31 and 46 earlier in the game. This one to tie it up with 25 seconds. Kick is up. It's got plenty of leg, and Jack Mitchell has tied it. Welcome to the football team, Mr. Mitchell. And no doubt about it, he stepped into it. That was his best kick of the day. And how about the drive? With no timeouts, worked it down the field. 45-yarder. Nice snap and hold. Finished his stroke. Drilled it straight down the pipe. And Pat Fitzgerald, who was on the Northwestern team, the last time these teams met 19 years ago as an All-American linebacker, pulled off the big upset, and Jack Mitchell with Northwestern 17-point underdogs. Unless Notre Dame were to crease something on the return, they'll kneel down and take this thing to overtime. And there's Cam McDaniel who enabled Northwestern to get it shot and take it down the field and get the field goal try, which was good. So we're tied at 40. Ball out to the 35-yard line with 16 seconds remaining. I'll tell you. Golson out to Fuller. Try to get him in space, but Northwestern is there. And this clock is ticking down into overtime. Can you believe this, I Doug? Really, I really did not anticipate this. I thought if Northwestern stays in the game, it would be a low-scoring, slug-it-out type of game. Instead, they've gone blow for blow with Notre Dame, scored 40 points on the board, and taken it to OT. Pat Fitzgerald kind of calming his troops down. They were coming off that sideline kind of celebrating, but Fitzgerald just bringing them back down to earth, saying, we got overtime coming up here, boys, with a chance. Brian Kelly circling his team around him. Notre Dame and Northwestern set for overtime at Notre Dame Stadium 40 all a lot has happened in this game as Fitzgerald and Northwestern try to pull off this upset Notre Dame with its hands on the football first at the 25 yard line as we begin overtime and Golson begins it by tossing it out to Fulston for no game well played defensively the key here right now for Northwestern is they have the ball last they can make those decisions to go for it on fourth down they can make those decisions on a field goal to win so they're in the driver's seat by going second by the way that fumble by Cam McDaniel was his very first of the season that's how steady he has been Notice Fuller has got three touchdown catches in motion to the near side and Golson going his direction going down to the end zone though and Corey Robinson stumbled there a little bump in contact there but no flag I think it's a good no call the ball sailing out of bounds Campbell has his eyes up looking for the ball running across he does cross feet with Corey there's contact no doubt about it I think it's a good no call though and that brings up third and ten. Remember the normally reliable field goal. They're bringing it here in Brinza. Man to man coverage. Golson gets it out near side, incomplete. And that brings up the fourth down. So they didn't gain anything on this beginning to overtime. The ball just did not come out of Everett Golson's hand smoothly there. The ball a little underthrown to Will Fuller. Now it's a long, long field goal attempt with the new holder. Yep, it'll be about a 42-yard attempt. And there is Malik Zaire. Brinza gives him a little tap on the helmet to, as if to say, we got this one. Missed earlier. You have to have confidence and trust in that guy and just step through it. From 38. Zaire didn't get a point after down. He gets this one down, and Brinza's got plenty of leg, but this one drifts off to the left. No good. Brinza, the all-time leader in field goals in Notre Dame history, is 0 for 2 tonight from 38 and now from 42 in overtime. The ball is set down. Laces are off to the left side. No rotation of the ball by the holder, Malik. Zaire. And the ball hooks to the laces side and hooks left. 
Not that that's the reason it hooked, but it was it was a holder that just says, hey, all I'm going to do is put this thing down and make sure I get it down so you can kick it. Is Jack Mitchell going to be the hero again? He's been hero number one so far to send this thing to overtime. And all they need is the field goal so they can play conservatively here and just try to gain some yards to shorten that field goal attempt. This is why it's such an advantage to go second or last. Keep it on the ground. And no gain here for Justin Jackson. Niles Morgan was right there. And there was no hesitation by Morgan on that one. He just read the play and went right to it. Very aggressive defensively. Notre Dame knows that Northwestern would like to be able to just run the football in this situation. Mike, what do you got? You know, that's about the fourth time I've seen Niles Morgan trust his eyes, flash, and make a play. And this one loses two or three yards. Jackson and Simeon were never in sync there. You know, you're playing not to lose. I, these, both these teams offensively have been aggressive all night. And now all of a sudden you're getting conservative because you have a chance to win. Now you're sitting here in third and 13 situation, something you haven't been in all night. Maybe come back to that screen pass. Total yards here are minus three by the two teams so far on overtime. Simeon, quick look to the right, but he gives it to Warren Long. He gets just inside the 25, back to the 24. Jalen Smith brings him down, but on fourth and nine, Jack Mitchell comes back out to the field. Boy, so this will be a 41-yarder to win it. Playing so conservatively, draws and screens in third and long, just to give yourself this opportunity. Made the 45-yarder to send it to overtime. This to pull off the upset again at Notre Dame Stadium. 41-yarder on the way for Mitchell. Absolutely good. And Northwestern has beaten Notre Dame. 19 years removed from another upset. He hadn't made a field goal more than 29 yards all season long. He comes into Notre Dame Stadium, goes four for five, including three 40-plus field goals made, and Jack Mitchell and Northwestern have pulled off the upset on Notre Dame again. Let's go down to Catherine. Coach, 1995, you complete the upset of the century as a player. You come back here, 2014, another huge upset. Which one is sweeter? Well, I think Coach Barnett said in 95 it was no upset, and uh, our guys played their hearts out today. I'm really proud, especially our seniors. Made a lot of big plays on a stretch, and, uh, you know, credit Notre Dame. It was a heck of a battle, but really proud of our guys. Trevor Simeon was outstanding in this game. How would you grade your quarterback's performance? Uh, I want to know. That's all that mattered. We had to come here. Our backs are against the wall. We talked early in the week about this being a playoff-type game, going back to being in high school in November, and the, guy, the young men are the ones that got it done. I'm so happy for them. I'm so happy for our staff, and Jack Ryan and Brennan are back at home with stay, so... Uh, Daddy's coming home with a win. Jack Mitchell had the game on his shoulders twice. What can you say about him performing under pressure with those field goals? Well, Jack's a young man from California. He's pretty chill, and he's a terrific young man. He also plays baseball. Really proud of him. I'm really proud of him. It's a whole man operation. This is a team win, and really proud of everybody. I can't thank our fans enough for the support, and uh, our backs are against the wall still, so we got to keep battling and have a great week this week. But what does a win like this do for the program? Well, it keeps us one step closer to getting a postseason for our seniors. I mean, we've been a five bowl games over the last six years. This program is in unbelievable shape. It's never been in this good a shape. We've lost some heartbreaking losses, but these guys have persevered, responded, and stayed together. And 
that's what Wildcats do. Finally, Coach, you brought the team together right before overtime. You huddled them together. What did you tell them in that moment? Well, it's the same thing we do every day. We put a fist together talking about playing together as one heartbeat, and we pound our chest. And we call it the fourth quarter, and that's uh, like we do every day at the end of practice. So I'm really proud of them. Coach, congratulations. Thanks so much. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks. Go Cats. Dan, back up to you. There's that uh, go cats go line cats. that uh, Fitzgerald squeezes in there after every interview he does. He is uh, as positive as you can possibly be. Right now, stay with us on NBCSN for the Notre Dame postgame show for our entire NBC crew. Danick saying so long. Notre Dame loses it 43-40.